Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome to a basic SeaWiz controller tutorial for From the Depths. Because it's high time I got around to that. Because SeaWiz, as of late, is fast becoming one of my favorite things in From the Depths, and no small part because the controller is actually controllable now. The UI is a lot better than it used to be, and so even I, with my uh, primitive, non mathsy non-engineering brain can understand it. So, this video is kind of an introduction uh, to SeaWiz in general. Uh, so we're not going to go over everything in exhaustive detail, we're saving that for another day, because as to things tend to be in From the Depths, and I'm getting flashbacks to the armor tutorials that I made ages ago and you should totally watch, because I nearly died making those, it's even more complicated than how it first appears. There's lots of stuff. So, Basically, SeaWiz is an acronym for Close-In uh, Weapon System, and in the context of From the Depths, what that usually means is a, is a weapon system, uh, be it missiles, or advanced cannons, lasers, or even cram, uh, that shoot other projectiles. And the other projectiles that can be shot is missiles and cram shells. Yes, you can have cram sea whiz that shoots down other cram shells. I have seen it done. It's not incredibly effective, but my goodness, it has wonderful meme potential, as the kids say. So, we're mostly focusing on the controller this time, which is this little block here. So, where you find this is in the defense section, and there's two variants, uh, which are basically the same. You have the close and weapon system controller, so sea whiz controller, and you have the all in one sea whiz controller, which is exactly the same. Except it's way more expensive and it has a built-in failsafe to stop uh, your weapons uh, shooting friendly blocks. Uh, and a built-in wireless receiver, which means you don't have to uh, stick uh, one of these on it instead. So, that's basically the only difference. That otherwise, the UI and uh, everything else works exactly the same way. So, if you read the description... Uh, the SeaWiz controller directs weapon fire at incoming projectiles. Make sure the AI has a munition warner that can see the missile. If using a cannon with explosive or flak warheads, make sure the shells have a time fuse and the cannon has a laser targeted component as well. Uh, so, as it says down there, mainly effective with timed Evos, flak and HE shells, but is capable of kinetic and fragment kill as well. Can also fire, mi fire missile interceptors and laser combiners to achieve a kill. And it can use crams, uh, but that's not in there and we're not really talking about that today. It bears mentioning that uh, the same patch that allowed uh, the UI of this thing uh, to be more accessible also means that they can control things on uh, the main hull of your construct and so you don't need to mount them on a turret and I keep forgetting to do that so uh, please don't forget to do that uh, don't be a me, be a smarty that rhymed uh, so let's talk about this controller itself there's a whole bunch of options here so we've got lock target rule set which I have managed to get away with safely ignoring right now, like, probably in the future as I learn more about this, uh, we'll talk about this a lot more, but today it's the main rule set, and basically these are the conditions uh, that guide the aiming of uh, whatever weapon uh, the thing is controlling. So, uh, this is pretty similar to the basic template I use. And I might mess with numbers right here. And it bears mentioning that this setup right here does not work for every uh, SeaWiz system. It depends on your individual uh, SeaWiz system itself, uh, what kind of weapon it is, what you want it to do, uh, whether it's the primary munition defense or a secondary one on your craft, and so on and so forth. This is just the stuff which I find you kind of absolutely need if you want the thing to do what you want it to. So to start off with, going down the list, uh, we've got these conditions here. You've got ignore inside, ignore outside, wait inside, and wait. And you've got a whole bunch of uh, conditions here. So distance, altitude, speed, angle of incidence, target azimuth, target rear azimuth, target elevation, offset to aim, azimuth offset to aim, Elevation offset to aim, azimuth to aim, rear azimuth to aim, elevation to aim, interception distance, uh, interception angle of incidence, acceleration, cluster size, shots fired, number of sewers aiming, type of projectile, and projectile diameter. This is a lot, uh, which is why I stick with just a few of them. And like I said, in probably in future videos, we'll go into more detail about the others. 
which is just basically me frantically stalling for time so I can learn more. Anyway, so the basic thing. So, first off, we have, well, this is in no particular order because that's how life works. Uh, we've got the ignoring function. So ignore inside means that whatever values are inside the range, and that range right there is, well, your range slider. Uh, ignore inside, you ignore what's inside that range. Ignore outside is you ignore outside that range. So if you have a range, say, for here, uh, 0 to 2000, uh, it'll ignore everything uh, outside uh, of this range. So yeah, so everything 0 to 2000, it will uh, be interested in that, but then it will, uh, it will ignore that. So since this is altitude, it means that it'll ignore stuff that's underwater, because uh, not all seawears is good at shooting torpedoes. Uh, ignore inside is the opposite, so if I set it to, say, that and this, uh, that accomplishes pretty much the same thing, uh, but uh, just the numbers are different. So let's do that. And the weight is interesting. The weight is priority of target. Uh, whatever you give more weight to, uh, the system will prefer to aim at that. And now actually going down what I've done here. Man, I'm already talking too much. Anyway, so ignore outside altitude because you don't want your SeaWiz system uh, shooting at things which are too far away and altitude includes that. And I already mentioned torpedoes. Uh, this particular SeaWiz system is just a kind of a very basic SeaWiz. Uh, it is kinetic and it uses uh, little shells like this. Nothing fancy, heavy head, bunch of solid warhead bodies. Uh, just enough to get over uh, 20 armor pierce, more on that later. And a decent amount of kinetic damage, enough to pop the odd missile. And the Tetris is not going to win any design awards anytime soon. Uh, but the important thing is is that these shells aren't good at shooting things underwater and so uh, the minimum altitude so to speak is uh, zero so it doesn't shoot at anything that's in the water that's an important function right there if uh, it does have a super cavitation base or if you're using a serious controller that's controlling uh, missile interceptors that can be both uh, that can function both above and below the waterline, uh, you might want to do stuff like that. Uh, it's very customizable. Uh, speaking of distance, uh, by the way, distance is another important one because um, uh, at short ranges, uh, missiles are kind of too close for a lot of weapon systems to get a bearing on them because, you know, the thing needs to turn many more degrees and missile interceptors need to make a really hard U-turn to do anything, so I tend to set the minimum range to around 50. Uh, possibly could go even higher. And the maximum range is also kind of short, generally speaking. Not a hard and fast rule, because with really big missiles, uh, the sooner you shoot at them, the sooner you blow them up, and that's very handy. In fact, uh, if it's a laser, that is your SeaWiz, this can be set very high, because they don't really miss that much. But for now, we're going to set that back to 900. Um, the main reason uh, that I set uh, any kind of projectile sewers, which frankly is APS, and also simple weapons, I forgot to mention. Um, some simple weapons, anyway. Uh, the main reason this is kind of short is because at this range, roughly 900 to 1000 meters, uh, that is the point where the missile is now aiming straight at you, and it's coming at you in a nice straight line, so it's easier to hit. And the further away uh, the missile is, or the cram shell, um, the harder it is to hit and you have wasted shots and you could be uh, either chucking Daka at a missile that's closer or at the enemy himself. And here we've got our first weight inside uh, value, so weight inside and the angle of incidence. So uh, this is basically what angle the thing is coming at you. Uh, value of 0, value of 180, so the range is 20 to 180. I really should actually drop that down there. And really should drop this like even further, but basically you want to, whoa, okay. All right, so let's drop that back down to zero there. Uh, so basically you want things coming straight at you to be prioritized. And if things are coming off uh, from a higher angle, you don't want to prioritize them as much because you want this thing to spend as little time as possible uh, turning to shoot at stuff because that's valuable time 
uh, that means the missile is getting closer and closer and is about to kill you. So the weight at maximum range is a negative number and you can accomplish the same thing uh, by setting this to a positive number. In fact, you could do something like this. It works kind of similar to the target prioritization uh, card uh, on the main AI. And next wait inside thing is distance. Uh, same thing really, you really kind of want to prioritize things that are close to you. Um, because an often thing, an often thing, a frequent thing I see with SeaWiz um, is, and this is my SeaWiz by the way, um, is that they prioritize missiles that are just behind the missile that's closer, which means that missiles slip through really easily, and that's annoying as hell. So uh, that's a that is a bit of a problem. So we don't want that. We want to, to shoot the things which are closer because they're easier to hit, and they're coming to kill us. So that's bad. And uh, next is we wait inside and uh, protect our diameter. So what this means is, is that. You've got 0 uh, to 2,000, uh, which is about as big as projectiles get. And this is set to prioritize smaller ones. So same as the thing there, the white range all kind of works the same way. And you can do something like this. So at this, in this case, uh, since it's weighted more towards uh, the minimum end of the scale, it prioritizes smaller things. Uh, but And uh, over here, it like prioritizes well, it does not prioritize things which are bigger. Depending on what kind of SeaWiz you have, uh, you might want to switch this around. So in this case, uh, I don't um, particularly mind uh, what um, uh, weight this is. I'm actually going to weight this up a little bit uh, because, and this is a very handy note that I should have mentioned earlier, it is never a waste um, to damage an incoming projectile because all projectiles, uh, so that's... Um, uh, unless they're simple projectiles, like from simple weapons. So that's advanced cannons, crams, and missiles. The more damage the projectile is, the less damage it does. So active defenses like SeaWiz and Lambs and stuff, they're never a complete waste. They always help your survivability just a little bit. So uh, in particular with big stuff, uh, like big uh, heavily packed cram shells or really big missiles, even just damaging them before they get to you can potentially mean the difference between uh, the paint on your craft getting scratched and your craft getting its face blown off. So probably a smart idea to prioritize the bigger stuff because the smaller stuff doesn't hurt as much generally. And um, speaking of the bigger stuff and the small stuff, so uh, this is basically the same as that. So the weight, well, no, it's not. So type of projectile. Uh, as you can see here, one is missile, two is cram shell, and the slider doesn't go anywhere other than one or two. And so this is, if you want to prioritize shooting at missiles or crams, I would suggest generally weighting uh, more towards missiles rather than crams, because even though cram cannons can be very, very strong, uh, they're not guided as strongly as missiles are. Yes, you have cram mortars, which do home in on you a little bit. Um, but they're much easier to dodge. Missiles uh, might have missed in the name, but miss is the thing they generally don't do, unless you are very fast or have countermeasures, etc., etc. And so I would generally recommend uh, prioritizing this, also because uh, the large missiles, um, large missiles, and particularly huge missiles, they do, like, they generally are far scarier than cram shells, unless it's a really giant cram cannon shooting at you. And again, they track you. Cram cannons generally don't. And last but not least, and this is actually the default setting, which I kind of had to stick back in here, and we're back to an ignore outside um, uh, value. So this is the angle of incidence. So uh, this is similar to the weight inside of it, but this ignores, and in fact, this is not actually set up. I should really set this to like this. Uh, to have uh, the weight inside and the ignore outside values kind of match. You'll notice the weight uh, for distance and the ignore uh, distance are exactly the same here. Uh, because that, like, if they're not the same, it's just like, it's not consistent. It doesn't necessarily impact what your SeaWiz is doing, uh, but it does make for janky numbers and that's no good. And, but the angle of incidence is, as said before, zero is straight ahead, 180 is moving away from the weapon, and so you kind of want to set this reasonably narrow and just have proper SeaWiz coverage by having 
uh, sea whiz just scattered all over your craft because generally uh, you're gonna put sea whiz on larger craft like really like this turret for instance this is like the secondary uh, or even tertiary turret on like a battleship or just some kind of large airship or something like that for a small craft this would be a main weapon so generally sea whiz uh, not good like just in one uh, like most active defenses, like having more than one uh, redundant system improves your chances considerably. And uh, in this case, angle of incidence, this is set to about 60. So basically 60 degrees out. So it's, I guess, about a 120 degree uh, cone. Because remember, zero is in front, 180 is like behind, so to speak. Um, or rather moving away. It's a little bit hard to understand. Um, it's got a nice narrow cone in front of it so it doesn't get distracted by things that it'll have to turn too much to go shoot at. So, uh, that's basically uh, my basic setup. Like, like you say here, there's a lot of stuff here. And you can basically... Um, you don't have to use all of these. You don't need every single one of these in here unless you really want something specific. For general sewers use, uh, the values you see before you will generally do the trick and you just mess with the distance uh, depending on whether you're using a laser or not. By the way, particle cannons do not work as sewers and you'll mess with, say, the weights or what you want, actually want to prioritize and so on and so forth. So, unfortunately, there's no shortcut to sewers. You are going to have to build a thing uh, and mess around with it uh, quite a bit. And so, yeah, that's basically the controller. And then talking about specific sewers, I'm going to... Uh, just uh, let's see here what kind of thing spams missiles and what can we sh shoot at let's let's put in a banshee so this particular one i should mention that this sea whiz is being used in conjunction with a weapon controller which means that uh, if you want to do this you'll notice the priority of the sea whiz controller whoopsie daisy we're not doing a very good job there this thing does not do well with small missiles that's worth mentioning, actually, uh, but in a hot second. But yeah, if you want the Seawiz controller to take precedence, uh, or to take priority, rather, uh, set the priority higher, so the priority of the Seawiz controller is set to zero, and the priority of the weapon controller is set to minus 500. So uh, it will prioritize shooting down missiles uh, rather than anything else. And against medium missiles, uh, this turret is doing a very uh, pretty good job, uh, but you'll notice the... It's not perfect, and the small missiles are sneaking through. But yeah, so I guess we should talk about the APS Seawiz first. Like, uh, kinetic versus chemical. So this is a kinetic Seawiz, so it's decent against uh, medium to large missiles. Uh, but it's kind of bad against small missiles, because when you get a whole swarm of them, it doesn't do very well. So, And also, it detects them slightly too late. And they're small, so these are... These little, uh, these little shells tend to miss, which is no bueno. So, Flak and HE, it's better for small to medium-sized uh, missile swarms, and Kinetic, like this one, uh, which needs at least 20 armor penetration, by the way, because all projectiles have uh, 20 armor value. Uh, so to do full damage, you need uh, 20 AP. Um, yeah, Kinetic is better for larger, for medium, large, and huge missiles, so... So yeah, like, if you really want good Seawiz coverage, I suggest uh, using a mixture of both, if you really want to be safe. And let's turn you off, let's see what happens. Actually, let's not turn you off. And... Uh, one thing to note about APS Seawiz, just in brief, is that you will be very tempted to use belt-fed autoloaders, because, you know, belt-fed fires very quickly. Uh, unless you make uh, something that's pretty darn big, uh, belt-fed loaders have a long reload time. There's that period where the gun cannot fire uh, because it's too busy reloading, so I implore you to resist the temptation to use belt-fed loaders for your Seawiz, because... Uh, there'll be a large gap uh, in which your Seawiz will be reloading and it won't be able to protect you, and that's bad. You can see that like medium missiles are just not getting through here, they're just getting popped like no one's business. It's beautiful. Um, so yeah, this thing is using regular autoloaders. Like I said, the Tetris is not going to win any prizes whatsoever, but it's got enough of them to have a roughly 230 
uh, rounds per minute. You do want to have a decent rate of fire, uh, because otherwise, uh, like, you know, you can't shoot missile down fast. Herpader. And the mantlet, note on this, this is an elevation mantlet, uh, just so it can shoot things coming in low. Uh, depending on what you want uh, your gun to shoot at, um, you might want to swap that out with an AA mantlet so it can shoot straight up. It depends on what you want this uh, to do. I generally prefer a 3 meter elevation mantlet uh, because I like to use super cavitation uh, kinetic rounds, which means they can pop both airborne missiles and torpedoes. Uh, which is a great idea, and if you want an example of that, uh, spawn in the Megalodon, because its seawiz is pretty good. Also, rail guns are awesome. Uh, a note on, like, missile interceptor seawiz. Uh, the main advantage of using a seawiz controller, uh, and particularly sticking them on a turret, is because uh, the thing doesn't need to worry about steering the missiles on target, so they need less fins, and means you can make them faster and it just means that uh, you can point them in the direction they want to go uh, more easily. So there's the advantage there. Laser Seawiz, nothing much to say except do make a decent laser. It doesn't matter too much if it's a continuous or a uh, Q-switch laser. I've seen both work reasonably well. Does need at least 20 uh, armor penetration of the projectile, same as APS. And um, it might help to have more than that just in case uh, your Seawiz gets smoked because that's bad. And a note on Cram Seawiz is that it's very derpy, and if you're serious about good missile defense, don't bother. Uh, I've mostly, from what I understand, uh, Cram Wiz, and apologies for not having one to show off right now, that's mostly useful uh, in tournaments where Crams are the only real legal weapon. So if you've ever watched uh, Menti's tournaments, there is my shout out for the day. You see Cram Wiz in that, because it's kind of the only sewers that's allowed really and it can work surprisingly uh, particularly against other cram cannons because well they fire slow your, your cram whiz fire slow and it's not a big issue against everything else it's pretty much useless <laughs> so don't bother against missile swarms cram whiz is not great um, and a final note on sewers which I'm probably gonna repeat ad nauseum in uh, actually you know what I can do I can do this so I don't need to keep tracking yet um, like, Seawiz, like all active defenses, it works best when it's layered with itself, so uh, to give you an idea of this, I'm going to uh, do this thing right here, going to spawn in an iron cordon. Um, this sounds obvious, but um, uh, the more of something you put, the better it does. So the iron cordon has large missiles, and... This Seawiz doesn't, doesn't do too badly with shooting them down, uh, but it doesn't do quite enough, so don't think that one gun is going to do the trick, uh, because blam, 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 uh, that is no good. Also, cram cannons, and that is no good. So, if you really want to cover your bacon, um, that's a weird way to say it, is to uh, layer your Seawiz and have enough so that there's some redundancy and they could kind of cover each other and layer each other. And, uh, incidentally, this kind of shell actually does decent uh, enough damage by itself. So you can see three of these arranged in a battery. They're just like, they don't care. They will happily shoot down uh, quite significant numbers of uh, large missiles, which is fantastic because other things would have trouble with that. Lambs uh, don't tend to like uh, shooting down large missiles. And that's... Um, yeah, and missile interceptors can have kind of derpy prioritization, unless you're using a Seawiz controller to control him. So yeah, best layered. Something like this, um, paired with lambs or interceptors or flares or something like that. That would work really well, uh, but on their own, less so. So that's basically, that's basically the basics of the Seawiz controller and the kind of types of Seawiz. Uh, we'll do more specific stuff in the future and i hope this helped and if it didn't help i hope it was entertaining and if it was neither well i hope you have a wonderful day anyway i hope you i don't know watch a delightful movie or something or have a really wicked sandwich so on that jolly note thank you all so much for watching please like comment subscribe if you want to see more videos like this support me on patreon or youtube membership if you like it really helps and there's fun perks in it for you Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. More SeaWiz tutorials, probably, coming in the future, as they occur to me.
Farewell.